You must be loving all this attention. It's my favorite thing in the world. Yeah. <laughs> you, you put in all the media requests, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Don't look at anyone. Uh -huh. uh, don't blame anyone. Yeah, I'm not blaming anyone. Because we all want to shower with your love, oh, obviously. Um, you know, it, it's a bittersweet moment, I think, for a lot of fans. But I'm wondering how you're feeling, because here we are at the finish line, and I'm yeah. just wondering what kind of emotions are going through you. Honestly, like, I'm good. And I, I always wanted to come to this point and arrive at this point in my career where, yeah, I'm okay with... The decision I'm making and I've made and you know after Tokyo yeah I knew I didn't want to play in Paris but wanted to give the World Cup one more shot and then without the World Cup went I was like okay we need to qualify for Paris and then it's been kind of perfect to have four kind of send-off games and I'm good the team's in great hands and I'm looking forward to vacation <laughs> <laughs> Does the body ache a little bit more? Because here's the thing, you are still playing pro. Yeah. You're still in great shape. Yeah. You still have a lot to give. Yeah. Um, so what was the ultimate decision then with the national team? I think I've always wanted to play like a year of pro after playing national team. Um, you see the men do it all the time where they retire internationally and then, then play professional football. And that's always excited me. And yeah, I look forward to you know, a year with Portland to obviously compete, try to win, but try to enjoy it. Um, the national team is obviously a very enjoyable place to be, but it's also like the highest competitive, you know, environment. You're trying to win World Cups and Olympic gold medals. Um, I've done all that, so I'm good. The cameras caught you after that final Jamaica game, mm -hmm. the second, uh, where you officially qualified for Paris and the tears were there and mm -hmm. you were being consoled by teammates. Did you think that was your final game? Did you think that was it? So up until that point, like a decision hadn't been made, but like as that camp went on and even leading into that camp, there was definitely a part of me that was like, this is it. Um, I. I hoped that there would be some sort of send-off game. Um, you know, I've seen obviously previous teammates be recognized as they should be, and I was hoping that there would be that opportunity. Um, I didn't know it was going to come, you know, this year. Uh, but yeah, to play a last game in Vancouver, I, yeah, you can't write it any better than that. It really is a perfect script. And, you know, we joke a lot about how well, it's not really a joke. You flat out said, I don't like being the center of attention. And I always have this image of that Homer Simpson gif where he just backs up into, into the bushes yeah. and just disappears. I'm like, that probably would be how Christine would like to exit. I, definitely. <laughs> that was my um, intention. <laughs> just back up into a bush. Um, and just like be done and drift off and that be okay. But after speaking to my teammates and friends and family, I was convinced otherwise, and now I'm sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> but also, you've played a few games already yeah. in this, what we've dubbed the farewell tour. <laughs> Seeing all the fans come out, though, for you, are you happy that you made the decision? As yeah, well to play of these course. Games? And it's one of the few things that playing for this national team, you know, we haven't been able to play a ton of home games. And yeah, when this was set up, obviously with the assumption that we would qualify for Paris. Um, it seemed like a no-brainer that, you know, have I ever, like it's, I've never played in Halifax, I don't think. Mm. Um, you know, and just to be able to go to, to places that don't always get to see our national team compete, um, it was wonderful. Let's talk about your legacy, because it's a big one, and let's start on the pitch. How do you want people to remember Christine Sinclair, the player? Um, I think just someone that like gave their all. Um, yeah, you are gonna make me cry maybe. I'm not trying. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, just like a someone that, yeah, proud Canadian that gave their all and through good and bad times with the national team, just stuck with it and yeah, just hope to, yeah, leave the, the game in a better place. Um, and obviously, hopefully, known to have won a few things as well. Well, I remember that 
2012 Olympics, and I know we talk about that a lot, but when you scored that hat trick, you had a look in your eyes. Everyone in the control room I was working that day, we all would have ran through a brick wall <laughs> because of that leadership. Everyone felt it. And I think a lot of people will most definitely remember you many times for putting the team on your back. And we love you in Canada, but here's the thing, you have the resume. You're an Olympic champion. You're a league champion with Portland Thorns. I believe you're also like second all time in NWSL scoring. You are the international all time leading goal scorer. But when it comes to global recognition, I don't, I don't feel like it's been given to you. In fact, a couple of years ago, a tweet was put out that said, name someone who's never won the Ballon d'Or who should. It was Megan Rapino who responded yeah, I saw that. by saying Christine St. Clair. How did you feel when you saw that? I mean, obviously, like Megan and I have a, a long history, like we played college together. Um, yeah, it was, it's always nice to read something like that um, from like a friend, but also such a competitor and, you know, place for the enemy. Um, mm -hmm. But honestly, I've never done it for the individual like recognition. Um, I look at our national team and I think we're constantly overlooked individually and collectively and yeah we we surprised some some people along the way but for me it's never been about the individual accolades it's about being try us trying to win games win tournaments um, and like improve our sport uh, I don't know, the individual stuff just doesn't matter. That's why I chose a team sport, to be honest. <laughs> but in this team sport, you've also won things. Uh, heading into Tokyo, we know the mantra was change the color. You did just that. And oftentimes, you know, when athletes achieve this pinnacle in their career, they reflect. Mm -hmm. And they reflect on the hard work, what it took to get there. They reflect on people who helped them along the way. Who were you thinking of when you had that gold medal wrapped around your neck? Oh, God, like everyone that helped me get there like oof, teammates <clears throat> that built this program up from scratch that you know never got that opportunity um <clears throat> that we were given in tokyo uh, obviously my family the people back home it being you know a, an olympics in covid times mm -hmm. that you know <clears throat> people that usually would travel to support weren't able to come and watch it on tv at two o'clock in the morning or whatever it was um definitely my family um you know my little nieces that they just thought it was the coolest thing um and now you know dream of representing canada that you know i didn't have that when i was little um so to see the times changing and know that this is just the beginning for this team you've talked a lot about even those who have influenced you when you were younger and coming on in and charming hooper being part of that and everything i mean did you did you feel like you were also kind of doing them justice as well and getting that done. Yeah, I mean, there's so many people that like started this program. I mean, Charmaine, Andy, mm. the Jerry Donnellys, the Sylvana Bertinis that, you know, I was I was fortunate enough to like be growing up in Vancouver during that time and be able to like play a little bit with them. And they like made this national team cool when it, when it wasn't cool, you know what I mean? And, yeah, I mean, they definitely inspired me, and that's what I mean. They they never got the same opportunities that players on the national team now have, whether that's playing for Canada, whether that's professionally. But it's like it's on their shoulders that we won that, and yeah, they deserve a lot of credit. Last time we actually sat down, I think in person, we've done a bunch of those Zoom interviews. Oh, love as well. the Zooms. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. Um, also, you told me about the Zumba classes you were doing, but I thought it was that Zumba. Was, no, if you were, Zumba. Yeah, that was Desiree Scott. Blame her. Yeah, yeah. I uh, misunderstood yeah, that one. Yeah, that's fine. That was a fun little gaffe. <laughs> but it was a year ago that we sat down. You were promoting your book. Mm -hmm. And it was really the first time you've also opened up about your parents. Do you think about them a lot? <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're the best. Um, like supported me the entire way, gave up, sacrificed everything so my brother and I could live the life that we live today. Um, and yeah, it, uh, my dad stuck around to watch Rio. 
And then my mom you know, got to watch Tokyo before she passed away. So, uh, yeah, I owe them a lot and just continuing to try and make them proud. Oh, I think we all know the answer to that one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have a lot of strength in you, um, and, and we know we know where that comes from. <sighs> Stop it. Take a little breather there. No, we're good. Maybe this won't make you so sad. Okay, maybe good. This, maybe this one might make you a little mad. Oh, shh. Yeah. No, sorry. Is the wo World Cup, does that feel like the one trophy that got away? Yeah, and, yeah, no. Like... Um, because we gave it all, like every single World Cup that I participated in, back to the very first one that I was in and we finished fourth, like to this, you know, most recent one in Australia, like we gave it everything and I, I can't be disappointed with the effort. That's kind of always been my motto is like, as long as you've given everything, and you've left no stone unturned, like, what can you do? It's a mm -hmm. sport. The other team wants to win just as much as you do. And I think what you saw in Australia is like, the margins in the women's game are now like minuscule, you know, whether it's a PK, whether it's a injury or an illness or like, it, yeah, it, the game, it's, it's exciting. I've waited my whole career for the women's game to be where it's at now. Um, would have been nice to have won a World Cup. It wasn't meant to be. Let's talk about your legacy off the pitch then, because you've also lent your voice for the women's fight, equal pay, equal treatment within the Federation. Um, you've also lent your voice to showing the importance for a domestic, a women's domestic league on Canadian soil. How has the women's game changed when 16-year-old Christine St. Clair stepped on the pitch to 24 years later? <laughs> Holy, um, like I said, like my, f I think back to the first World Cup that I played in was the U.S. and we finished fourth. And aside from your like crazy fans, no one cared, no one knew. Um, and to see the game where it is now, like countries that you never would have thought become a world power and now world powers the the investment that federations are putting into their women's programs that leagues are putting it into their professional teams um, it's exciting it when I'm done playing like I can't wait to just become a fan and watch the game and be in awe of the talent that's out there um, unfortunately I haven't necessarily seen that growth in Canada um, which, as I leave this team, scares me a little bit. Do you plan on still being involved when it comes to that fight? Yeah, I mean, even though I might not be on the pitch, I've, I've always got it in me to, to fight, to help grow the game, whether it's domestically in Canada or, or internationally. Um, this game's been my life since I was four, so it's, I'm not just like, quitting cold turkey, you know, like, <laughs> I'll, I'll still be around. Well, I think a lot of people will recognize that you do have a powerful voice in the sport. There's a foundation, Girls With Goals, that you're starting. What is that about and why is it important to you? I mean, for me, I, I firmly believe that like every opportunity that a young, a young boy gets, a young girl should get. And especially in sports, that's not the case. You know, you look in Canada, for instance, there's two professional environment for environments for our men's players and none for our women's mm -hmm. players. Um, but also young young athletes, soccer can be a, an expensive sport. And I mean, I grew up pretty poor. Um, and yeah, finan finances shouldn't be a reason that a kid can't play soccer. Um, so anything I can do to help. I mean, I had help growing up. Um, and if I didn't have that, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't have been able to continue playing soccer. So if I can help in any way, maybe it's another superstar coming through, who knows? So the national team is done, but you do have another year professionally. What would the chances be of Christine St. Clair playing professionally on home soil? That league's gotta speed up. <laughs> <laughs> 
if I'm being honest, the league's got to <laughs> come on. Um, no, I mean, yeah, that, I think I feel like that's another thing that's just not meant to be. Um, you know, especially Portland's become my home, and honestly, I can't see myself playing anywhere mm -hmm. other than there. I will support a new league in Canada with everything I have. Um, but unfortunately, I don't think it will be playing on a team. Um, there's definitely a few players on the national team that are looking forward to it, but I just don't think it's meant to be for me. Well, I know you've mentioned some things about when you retire, getting into maybe some coaching, uh, again, continuing to be part of this movement for the women's game. If you want to get into broadcasting, though, just let me know. I don't know. Like, <laughs> Because we know you love Because that I love the camera so much that I'm going to cheat. No. I mean, who knows? I think, um, like I said, for so long, soccer has been my life um, with, you know, very little free time, downtime. Mm. I mean, I can't remember the last time I had a real vacation because you're always thinking about, well, we've got a tournament in January. Um, but so, yeah, when I know I'm done, I know there will be opportunities for me. Um, and I will stay involved in the sport, so I'm not saying no. How's that? I'm going to remember that. <laughs> yeah, there is a big World Cup coming up. I don't know. I'm just there might throwing, be a seat right here next oh to me, boy. just you right know. there. Okay. I would now love we're that. pushing it. <laughs> I would love that. No joke, it is. I would absolutely love that. Listen, it's been an absolute pleasure Appreciate watching it. you play, and I think I speak on behalf of a lot of Canadians when I say thank you for everything you've done. I appreciate that. Thank you so much.